Hello everyone, welcome back. And today we are joined by my son Nero because his mom is out getting some groceries stuff. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the idea of ambiversion or ambiverts. And this comes from the suggestion of a commenter on my last video. I'll put them up here. You can see um, the general idea though is how does ambiversion fit within the context of the Myers-Briggs? But I wanted to give more context about ambiversion through the lens of general personality psychology as well, as well as the Jungian standpoint on ambiversion. Now, as you know, because I am a personality focused researcher and someone who works in philosophy and psychology related to personality, I like to give a broad perspective on like the different schools of thoughts related to certain personality characteristics. And ambiversion is one that I think is very much tied into Jung's original work in that Jung coined the term introvert and extrovert. So I feel like it's hard not to talk about Jung and the Jungian standpoint if we want an idea of what we're attempting to look for or identify when talking about an ambivert. So we'll be going over a few different perspectives related to personality psychology today as we talk about ambiverts. Let's get into it. So because Jung came first, we're actually going to start with Jung as we go over introvert, extrovert, ambivert. So to describe what an ambivert could potentially be, we kind of first need to know what an introvert or extrovert is. It's important to know that Jung never defined an ambivert. It's not an official category in his system of cognitive uh, psychology. So the extrovert is someone whose mind or cognition is focused on the outside world, or as he liked to call it, the object. I like to generally just say that the extrovert is someone who has an externally focused mind. They're paying more attention to things that are on the outside of themselves or their own personal experiences, where the introvert is someone who is the opposite. The introvert is someone who is focused on the subject or themselves. They're focused more so on what is going on internally and within them, within them and how things in the outside world relate back to them, which is a very important aspect of introversion. So the kind of general idea is that the introvert is always going to be relating things around them to themselves, whereas the extrovert is taking things more so literally or viewing them. And you could say even more so of a face value. They're, they're treating the object for what it is, or they're more interested in how that object or the thing in the outside world could impact the outside world as well. There's not as much reference to the self in the extroverted mind. So how does this play into the ambivert? Well, from a Jungian perspective, it doesn't because it was a dichotomous system in his mind. You were an extrovert or you were an introvert. You were not someone who could have a partially focused mind on the inside and a partially focused mind on the outside in terms of his cognitive functions. But that's not exactly true because you can when you look at how the functions actually play out in his cognitive function stacks. So when we're looking at the MBTI functions, which is, uh, we'll get back to the original personality characteristics from a dimensional perspective in a moment. But when we're looking at the MBTI functions, we will see that all types have an introverted function and an extroverted function in their top two function stack. So let's say we're looking at an INTJ. They're going to have introverted intuition as their primary way of interacting with and uh, engaging with and taking in information from the world. And then their secondary function is going to be extroverted thinking. So their mind is predominantly introverted, but they have an extroverted secondary way of interacting with the world. And Jung's entire point when it came to a cognitive type was kind of bringing in this other side of the psyche so you could become more balanced. So you could essentially become someone who is an ambivert. The difference between what we would normally think of as ambiversion and how Jung would describe an introvert who is developing extroversion is that the introvert would still be an introvert. They would be an introvert who has developed an extroverted quality within their psyche. They've kind of developed this extroverted side of themselves, but they still have a large preference for introversion. And the same could be said of extroverts and their preference for developing uh, extroverted mindsets first and then they would have to develop introversion along the way as they grow get older these sorts of things so that's really the Jungian standpoint is that there isn't really an ambivert but the goal is to become more ambiverted through the development of your secondary function so you have a more balanced psyche in the long run which is why when you're working with someone who's developed or is who is healthy you're less likely to see them as being on uh, one really far side of the dichotomy. So a really healthy introvert might at times appear like an extrovert. 
unless there's someone who's like really, really far on the spectrum of introversion, which does happen. And the same can be said with extroverts as well. But the more they develop their secondary function, the more they develop this other side of the mind, you should see a regression towards the mean and you should see them approaching ambiversion as they become healthier. Now let's look at introversion, extroversion through a more modern lens, which tends to view personality traits like introversion and extroversion as a continuum or one long category as opposed to having dividing points along that spectrum or dimension. So for example, the five factor model views extroversion as one long category. There is an introversion and extroversion that are being, being measured against each other. It's just how much of an extrovert are you? Um, something like the MBTI does have the two categories when we're measuring introversion, extroversion, but in reality, they're just measuring one quality and they're putting a statistically defined midpoint in the middle of that and then giving you a category based on that. So even when you take the MBTI instrument assessment, you're going to see that you get a dimensional score. You fall somewhere along the line from introversion to extroversion. It's defined as a continuum, but they're just giving you a side of the coin. They're giving you a category based on where you lie within your score range. So ambiverts in this model are going to be someone who is closer to the average. I think if I were to define an ambivert, it would be someone who lies within one standard deviation from the average up or down. And if you know anything about statistics, you will know that this essentially means you have a very average score. You're very, very close to what most people have in terms of your introversion, extroversion. And a lot of people are going to be around that kind of uh, level of introversion and extroversion, meaning statistically, that most people are ambiverts. Most people are going to be people who sometimes show qualities associated with the other side of the average. Let's say you score uh, 39th percentile in extroversion, which we would then classify you as an introvert and something like MBTI, you're still within the average score range. So it's not unlikely to think that you might show extroverted qualities from time to time. Or let's say you score 61st percentile, meaning you're a little bit higher than the average, but you're still within the average score range, meaning that it's not unlikely that you would show qualities of introversion from time to time. Now, this becomes different when we look at people who are outside of these average score ranges. Let's say we're going to view someone who's 92nd percentile extroversion. So this is someone who's quite extroverted. They're, you know, they're approaching the, uh, the further and further away standard deviations we'll see that this person is unlikely to express qualities or characteristics associated with what we would call introversion or as five factor model would call it low extroversion. Whereas if we're viewing someone who has, let's say seventh percentile extroversion, meaning they're very, very introverted, they're unlikely to show characteristics or expressions associated with extroversion or high extroversion in the five factor model. So in this kind of viewpoint, we're seeing that ambiversion is just kind of the average. Most people are ambiverts and we can expect that most people in life are going to show some characteristics associated with the other side of introversion, extroversion. If we actually look at the formal MBTI assessment or instrument, when you get your result back, each of your scores, despite giving you a category, will give you a dimensional score as well, meaning where you fall from introversion to extroversion in this uh, circumstance, you will get a specific score. And that's where I think a lot of people who put down the MBTI get a little confused because they're just saying you're either an introvert or an extrovert. But in reality, the MBTI fully is aware of the fact that there is a continuum of scores. They just have a divided statistically defined midpoint and falling on one side of that midpoint they think is the real differentiator between where you're going to start seeing uh, characteristics of introversion and extroversion or intuition sensing or any of the other dichotomies. So in the MBTI, they actually have nowadays what's called the mid zone preference. So if you're someone who's within the mid zone or you fall between introversion and extroversion, you're very likely to experience qualities associated with the other side. And that's generally what ambiversion is. So what I really am trying to get at here is that most personality models that are trait based or view things even categorically like the modern MBTI that aren't Jungian in nature do not use the word ambivert, but fully agree that that ambiversion is essentially a thing. And most people are willing to admit that ambiversion is going to be what is generally considered normal. Most people are not pure extroverts. Most people are not pure introverts. And when we go back to the Jungian standpoint, that is kind of his viewpoint as well. 
But the difference between these two interpretations, Jungian and modern trait-based approaches, is that Jung proposed that you are an introvert or extrovert and that your secondary cognitive function, or you could say the other parts of your mind, would eventually need to be developed according to the other side of the coin that you're on to make you a more complete human being. Whereas in terms of the five-factor model or MBTI as a letter or dimensional approach, we will see that ambiversion is just being closer to the mid-range. So they're kind of two fundamentally different approaches to introversion and extroversion. Now, from my personal perspective, I think that the best way that we can describe introversion and extroversion as a personality trait in terms of like a dimensional approach is that most people have a specific score. So let's say um, I am... I'm very low on extroversion myself. I'm like it's eighth percentile. I'm very low. The only reason it's that high is because I have high scores in assertiveness, which is a subscore of extroversion, and that carries my extra my extroversion dimension a little bit. But other than that, I'm very very low on extroversion. Now, if we were to look at a range of where I might be able to express introversion and extroversion, some days I'm going to appear like someone who is lower in introversion, someone who's maybe like second fourth percentile extroversion, some days I'm going to appear higher and it might not be weird to think of me as being more extrovert in circumstances, but that range does not extend extremely far. So the highest amount of extroversion that you're likely to see me show is somewhere maybe in like the 20, 25th percentile. You're unlikely to see me express qualities associated with what we would see with someone who is over that average line with extroversion. And I really think that's the difference here is that most people have a set score in terms of their personality and then a range of expressiveness. And the ambivert is someone who has a set score somewhere close enough to the middle that their expressive range can make them appear like they are on the other side of the average or as they are going to be someone who is not of the preference that they have, whether it be an introvert or an extrovert. So yes, essentially I do think ambiverts exist, but I also think that the Jungian standpoint or viewpoint is perfectly fine because the idea is to become ambiverted through Jung's viewpoint. Thanks for watching.